The Yaksha King is a formidable boss guarding the end of Chapter 5. Not only is he a powerful martial artist, but his arm blades give him considerable reach, making him far more dangerous than many of your other opponents. To be honest with you, he doesn't have all that many moves and special attacks, but where the danger comes from is his ability to chain them together, leaving you very few opportunities to counterattack and the amount of damage that some of them do. Luckily, you can also use these arm blades to tell what move he's going to do next based on how long they get and which part of him glows. So, in this video, I'm going to break down some of his more complicated movesets, give you a general strategy, and some tips and tricks that I use to defeat the boss. For me personally, I found that Pillar Stance made it much, much easier. This is because a lot of his attacks cause spikes to erupt from the ground or cause attacks to sweep along the ground. Now, if you're dodging, you have to time this correctly because it hits the entire area. But if you're using Pillar Stance, it's going to hit your staff and not damage you at all. Plus, when you get knocked off the staff, then that's a perfect opportunity to deal extra damage to the boss with your charged heavy. Also, as a note, I was using the Red Tides transformation just because that's very much a comfort pick for me. But if you're really, really struggling here, then using the Azure Dust, the tanky explosion summon, and standing directly on top of a boss when you pop it is also a really good way to go. So first up, his basic attack sequences involve a mix of his arm blades and kicks. Therefore, you always want to move left or right when you're dodging, not forwards or backwards. Problem with moving, especially backwards, is he has quite a bit of movement as part of his attack sequences, meaning instead of moving out of one attack and being safe, you'll move out of one attack and into the next. He's also going to cover quite a bit of distance with several of these strikes. Sometimes this means he will go out of attack range, other times this means he jumps into the air and attempts to attack you from above. Either way, dodge accordingly. Now, several of his finishers generate a field of spikes. The best way to avoid this is either A, get away from a boss when he finishes his attack sequence, B, hop up on your staff with pillar stands, or C, just bonk him in the face with a heavy attack as he's finishing up, because he is quite vulnerable to interruption. Sometimes this is a smaller field that simply explodes once, but other times it's a larger field that explodes twice, so don't run in by mistake. Now, one particularly notable attack sequence is when his two front arm blades glow. After he does this, he's going to execute a vicious series of strikes that is absolutely relentless. For the duration of his attack, focus on defense, or when you see the arm blades glow, that's right, that is your cue to bonk him with a heavy attack and interrupt what he's doing. I feel like the thing that makes this the most punishing is the sheer number of attacks that he fits into the sequence. Now, sometimes when he gets out of range of you, he's going to throw his arm blades at you. I don't know how this works. Maybe he's just constantly growing new bones. Maybe he can just generate magic spikes. Either way, you can dodge left and right to avoid these attacks, or you can sprint. This is one of the projectiles that I didn't try to deflect with staff spin, but that may work as well. As his health gets lower, he starts to get more desperate. This means using a new move where he gets very long arm blades and goes between a sequence of very wide sweeps that cover almost the entire arena, or linear slashes that cause spikes to erupt from the ground. I found the best thing to do here is first of all use Cloud Step to create a decoy. That's going to be the focus for his long slash attacks. Then second, immediately hop on Pillar Stance, because once you charge past the first focus point, you're going to be immune to the sweeps. And again, the long strikes are going to be focused on your decoy. This way you can negate the entire sequence. From here, he will occasionally use this throughout the rest of a fight. Just watch out for when his arm blades get very, very long. That means big attacks are coming and you should get out of the way. Now, sometimes around 40% health, he does a grab attack that results in a pretty cool cutscene. This is one of his attacks where dodging is pretty difficult, but hey, you get a cool cutscene, so you might not want to dodge it. But in case you do and you want to see the cutscene anyway, here it is. My kind destined for extermination. A monkey born to run through the stone can never understand my pain. I noticed around 40% health. He also adds one new martial combo. This one isn't super, super difficult to avoid. He summons a single long blade and then uses an attack sequence that's basically a minor version of his very long blade sequence from before. Again, get far away from the boss or time your dodges to avoid damage. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a specific vessel that can be used to counter the boss here. But fortunately, 
he doesn't have a huge variety in different moves. So as you start to learn his patterns, it should become fairly easy to avoid them. And I noticed this is one of those bosses that Pillar Stance is super OP against. Because yes, a lot of his sweeping slashes cover a lot of distance, but if you're up on a pillar, then you should be able to avoid all damage. This is especially true if you're able to get up on the pillar with two or three pips of focus. This really does take you out of range of almost all of his attacks, and he has a very few long range abilities that he can use. Something else that I found helpful is, whenever possible, stick close to a boss and dodge left to right, rather than trying to build distance. There's only a few attacks where I'd recommend building distance. Last but not least, after the cutscene at 40% health, this is when you should start popping all of your resources and burning your mana to do as much damage as possible. And since I didn't need a specific vessel for the fight, I used Weaver's Needle. Not only does it do a good bit of damage, but it helps build up stagger on the boss. For the same reason, I was using Red Tides because I was very comfortable with it, and I found not only did it do a lot of stagger, but it did a very good damage. I'd assume he's particularly vulnerable to Golden Lining from defeating Golden Lung as well. Just for some reason, I couldn't get the timing down to parry repost him, and if you can't parry repost, that transformation is particularly weak. And so, here's how the fight went for me. Is my kind destined for extermination? A monkey born from the stone can never understand my pain.
Now, after beating the boss, you get the Grieved Body Relic and the Plantain Fan Vessel. This is an insanely OP item, and I used it throughout Chapter 6. Basically, what you do is you pop the vessel, and it summons a tornado that for its entire duration CCs an enemy. And this is highly effective against pretty much everything in Chapter 6, and I'm going to assume pretty much everything in New Game Plus as well. I know I certainly got a lot of use on it, not only when I took out the secret boss, but also when I took out the final boss of the game and entered New Game Plus. For more about that though, do be sure to get subscribed, and hey, leave a like while you're down there. Personally, I really liked the Yaksha King as a chapter end boss. His moveset was pretty easy to understand, it wasn't overly flashy, but the fight was still pretty challenging. I didn't feel like I could just sit there and steamroll him, I had to pay attention. But if I paid attention, dodged everything correctly, there was nothing that fell too, too unfair. Well, aside of a cutscene, but it doesn't do that much damage, so I guess, fair enough, it does make the experience a little bit more cinematic. Uh, that's it. let me know down below, what do you think your favorite boss is out of all the chapter endpoints? Now if that's it, if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe you want to know how to enter the secret area and defeat the Golden Beachway Beast before you beat the final boss, I'll link to a video up in the card and down below. Or maybe you want a few tips on how to defeat the Red Boy to even get to the Yaksha King. Well, don't worry, that's part of my full written guide for this fight over at Maxwell GG, which I'll also link down below. That's about it for me today. That's it, before I go, special thanks to my patrons and channel members for continued support. For as those $1 a month, you can now make videos just like this one possible. Link to support is down below. And a big thanks to everyone who watched to the end of the video. I'm glad you enjoyed. Hopefully you've had quite a bit of success in Black Myth Wukong, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.